Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of Awaken Geek Them here on YouTube. My name is Joanna Menendez, and today we're going to try something a bit different. It's going to be more like a walkthrough and observation. Yeah, we're still going to review it, discuss the story, talk in depth about it. But at the same time, you know, I want to try something different. So, uh, this is my journey through one of the most famous manga that I have ever had the uh, uh, pleasure of reading, and that is Kentaro Miyuta's Berserk. This is Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. So this comprises of the first arc, if you will, the Black Swordsman arc, I think it's called. Uh, at any point, I might screw up with a name or two. Please uh, forgive me in advance. I, I am but a humble servant in the uh, YouTube world. Uh, I learned about Berserk many, many years ago. I think it was 1990-something when I learned about what anime was as a medium, and I enjoyed the things that people my age enjoyed. Uh, you know, your uh, Dragon Ball Z, Yu Yu Hakusho, Pokemon, uh, even Sailor Moon, stuff like that. But you knew, like, even from then, I was told of a series called Berserk. I didn't know it was a manga, of course. I was told of a series called Berserk, and it was just tucked away in the corner, like, you don't touch that. You leave that in that corner by itself. I knew it was, like, something bad, or, or something, well, not necessarily bad, but something for grown-ups, for adults, 18 and up. And uh, I just, I, to be completely honest with you, I completely forgot about the series because it wasn't something that, uh, one, at, the, at that time I wasn't interested in and I just, uh, I just kept moving on. Comic books, uh, movies, all that stuff uh, kept uh, piling up and stuff. So recently, I'm going to say two years ago, Berserk popped up in my uh, feeds and discussions and talks with fellow Omnibros and uh, YouTube and fellow uh, Facebook groups about books and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of groups out there. And the name Berserk kept popping up. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go and uh, do some research on it. And, and, and I think I looked up some videos and fellow uh, members of the Omnibus Collectors Network and all that stuff, they started baiting me. Pretty interesting. Uh, with uh, pretty interesting uh, uh, themes and, and pictures and, and all that stuff about the manga. And then I realized, oh, it's a manga. <clears throat> then it got adapted into a 26-episode anime series in the, in the 90s. Boy, I was just about to say the 60s. In the 90s, and it left off uh, after I think it adapted uh, the whole um, Golden Age stuff, so it would be volume 13 or 14 or something like that. Uh, so it, it it adapted all of that, and it ended on a massive cliffhanger, and it stayed on, uh, or season two, I guess, it stayed on uh, development hell all these years, and it wasn't until, oh, wait, that's right. It wasn't until the recently released uh, CGI Berserk anime series that the conversation really picked up again, because that was so atrocious and so god-awful that even I recognized, like... Uh, no, I remember the animation for the older anime and then this new stuff. First off, I, I, I cannot, uh, I, I just dislike wholeheartedly the usage of CGI in anime. It just looks so awkward and it's not where it's supposed to be. Clunky movement, no sense of symmetry, no sense of, or, or no depth perception. Everything looks uh, just in your face. It, it, it it needs more work like and by more i mean like a couple more years of work and it's more evident now in stuff like berserk yeah they they did anime movies where it was sort of blended some parts were uh, traditionally drawn uh, but it was mixed in with the cgi stuff and it wasn't as bad because it was controlled with this new tv series like there's this image that people like to repost i've done it myself with the character of guts just instead of slowly walking away from the panel you just see this motion going like this ding, 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 and he leaves off panel and it just looks freaking ridiculous I, I i it looks garbage i'm sorry i typically don't say that about stuff but it, it, it's a hot mess if you are like me and you want to venture into berserk just 
just don't watch any of that stuff. Just read the manga. Read the original source material. And if you want to watch the original anime, go ahead and do so, because that was pretty badass, uh, especially for the time it aired. Uh, nowadays, I don't think it would have aired. I don't know. That's the topic for another day. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, that's how uh, my story getting into Berserk. Eventually, uh, with an uh, order I did for uh, other books and stuff, I sneaked in a manga, and I got the first uh, volume of Berserk. Now, I was told from the get-go, first off, it has the parental advisory stickers. This is not a series for kids. It is not a series for kids, please. If you're a parent and your kid wants to read that, it just, uh, no, just stop. <laughs> I mean, there is a ton of graphic violence and sexual encounters and nudity and, and monsters and demons and goblins and shit that I, I you know, a, a kid would not have uh, the mental fortitude to comprehend what is happening on these pages and separate the dark fantasy element of it I, I don't I wouldn't want a kid to be uh, corrupted with all this imagery I uh, just leave it for when they're older you know there's a reason why we put warnings on stuff just pay attention anyways uh, yeah Berserk volume 1 it's not the best introduction and I was told uh, beforehand, but I cannot get into Volume 2. Everybody was saying, hey, you're, gonna, you're not going to like Volume 1, you're going to like Volume 2, it gets better there. Start reading from Volume 2. Th the completionist in me is like, no, I need Volume 1, because that is the uh, proper way of things. That is the order of life. I don't start with 2, I start with 1s. So, I got Volume 1, and the first panel is our main character of Guts having sex with this lady who turns out to be a giant freaking demon. And uh, he uh, proceeds to kill it, uh, and it's all mayhem, blood, guts, fury, unrelenting machismo, bravado, and epicness all the way through to where I'm reading. I'm past the halfway point of what's collected in uh, manga volumes by Dark Horse and all that stuff. So yeah, I do absolutely love this series. It is fantastic, and it is just an amazing exercise in the uh, uh, concept of world building. Miura is able to take all of these characters that are in a dark fantasy setting, in a medieval European sense, and breathe life into them and create this breathe, uh, and create this living world that just oozes with personality and atmosphere. The art in it is spectacular. Even on these earlier volumes, the art is a little uh, shaky here and there, but you still get a sense of realism that these characters inhabit a world where you could be a part of it. Scenes are drawn on hills with uh, uh, dead trees where you feel the cold air creeping in and just chilling your bones. Is It's that beautiful imagery. Or when you see monsters and, and demons and stuff uh, under the night sky with only like a uh, torchlight, stuff like that. It's that kind of spooky imagery that uh, just makes the series that much richer in depth that uh, just for that alone, just for an, uh, an artistic uh, point, I cannot recommend this enough. And I know I am extremely late to the party. You don't need to tell me that. I know. This is from the 80s. We're in 2018. And I only learned about it from uh, just whispers here and there. So I read the first volume uh, a year ago. And I liked it. It's a fun, it's a fine or fun introduction into this world. It's a little cliched at the beginning because you've read so much stuff. If you've never read Berserk and you've read hundreds of other titles or seen other movies and all that stuff, it they are do Miura is doing things here that we've seen later on with so many other uh, video games and dark uh, fantasy movies and all that stuff, where you're like, okay, it's a, a demon hunting and he's like this lone badass, but. At the time, it was pretty freaking revolutionary. You had Guts being one of the first uh, lone heroes with the big ass swords and all that stuff. And just, uh, it, it cemented a status that has, been, uh, that has been imitated ever since. And I think it's really cool. With this volume, you do see tropes of every other uh, dark fantasy thing. Uh, you, we get a, 
a sidekick that people are 50-50 on it. I happen to enjoy Puck's involvement in this. He's sort of like the Robin in the uh, Batman and Robin thing, where uh, if you had a series like its guts 100% by himself, it would be too uh, destructive for its own good, not only for the character, but for the reader as well. You need a breath of fresh air, and Puck, you know, he provides the comic relief, uh, and I, I, I don't know, I, I enjoy it. It's, it's, uh, it's not that bad to me. So yeah, the first volume, we get to see the setting on this uh, town and just, excuse my language, but the shitty conditions that these guys are living in, this world, this uh, medieval world, uh, where uh, corrupt officials, you know, the cl whole uh, cliched thing with uh, evil priest or clergymen or kings and all that stuff. Uh, but the twist here, uh, like I said, has to be the atmosphere, the, the concept of these characters inhabiting this disgruntled, gritty, heavy world that is very pessimistic. But inside that pessimism, we later find out why it is and, and the bright spots in it make it worthwhile. The character of Guts, of course, at the beginning, he's a bit of a douchebag, he's a bit of a jerk, but I liked the way uh, this was done. You get your answers as to why the character is like that later on with uh, the infamous Golden Age and all that stuff, and you get to explore the character for several uh, hundred chapters because the series is still ongoing, it's still not over as of this video. So at the beginning, I really did enjoy uh, the fact that you have this uh, lone wolf being accompanied by Puck the elf uh, or whatever and he finds this uh, place with this corrupt uh, um, uh, bishop and, and clergyman, clergyman and all that stuff. Eventually it progresses into Guts trying to stop this count from just basically murdering everybody for uh, doing nothing uh, wrong. Uh, and we do get to see a ton of demonic imagery. I'm not going to go too much into detail, just in case this is mostly a spoiler-free video. There are hundreds of Berserk videos. I am not doing something innovative here. I'm just expressing my love for this series in this new style of video uh, docu-series that I'm making. I don't know what to call it. So yeah, my journey through Berserk started very oddly and then it proceeded into these first three volumes which introduced uh, concepts like the behelet or behelet or whatever you want to call it, the, the egg with the weird funky faces and you do get to see your first taste of demons inhabiting uh, or, or serving as uh, parasites for humans and becoming sort of like these giant warriors. One is like a friggin' huge centipede, others like this big giant colossal beast. Uh, there's a crap ton of blood when uh, Guts decides to swing his sword around, it's choppy choppy time and everything just goes splat. And if you are sensitive about that stuff, about uh, this level of violence, it's very crude at times. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit uh, off-putting at times because it is so violent. But there is this uh, deep satisfaction of just uh, hacking and slashing away at all these freaking monsters that I enjoy. And yeah, there is a ton of nudity that might upset some people. So if that, if it bothers you, you might, okay, my first recommendation would be still, uh, at least check out the first uh, chapters in this story, the first 13 volumes or something, to get a feel for it. And if you still don't like it, it's not for you, and that is perfectly okay, but for everybody else that wants to stay, you're gonna go for a wild ride of emotions, you will feel things, and even from early on in these three volumes, I could say that uh, the feeling was there. Uh, sure, later on with the famous Golden Age, you get a much deserved explanation, but it wasn't, if it wasn't for uh, these starting volumes of the Black Swordsman arc, uh, this, uh, uh, this short uh, but sweet and simple arc introducing us to one of anime and manga's legendary characters, it wouldn't have been the same. If you would have started with Guts' backstory growing up and all that stuff, the effect would have been greatly diminished. I mean, you sort of need this introduction where you get to see the God Hand and what the hell they are, and just uh, Guts fighting to save a town and, and, this, and uh, the Count's daughter and all that stuff. 
you need that hard-edged, uh, uncomfortable introduction. So when you do get your answers for those lingering questions, it is such a satisfying feeling that I can't recommend enough. I absolutely love it and I am in it for uh, the long run. I didn't mention this and I kind of quickly want to mention it before we go. I know it's a little long, but the art is astounding. For the first volume, there are the opening pages. Let me see if I can do this without YouTube uh, censoring my ass. Uh, there is... I think I can show this. Yeah, I can show this. Um, uh, yeah, this type of shading and, and, and darkness of the, of the panels and stuff, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. I didn't like it. When I first started reading, I made the, uh, I made the observation, like, this is a little bit too muddied, sort of blurry for my taste. I want a more clean, sharper uh, drawing. But as soon as I say that, you do get art like this, early Muta art. Where is where it is? Uh, oh, here's a freaking giant monster thing that I can show. Look at that cobra bastard right there. It is so highly detailed. The craftsmanship involved involved in making this series is astonishing. If you've seen behind the scenes stuff and if you've seen concept art and drawings, preliminary stuff, background work, it is all just a thing of beauty. Even in the chaotic nature of fights, of demonology, of uh, the, the lovemaking and sex and guts and violence and all that stuff, it's very human. Miura is able to draw something that appeals to every sense even at its most goriest or uh, uh, grittiest you still like what you're seeing because it is brimming with richness with a richness and detail that i wish other comic books and manga could even hope to imitate that's how beautiful the artwork in these volumes is even from early on and i was complaining about it because it was a little bit too uh grayish but from this, from, I don't know if you can see it, but to go from this to, let me pull a panel from volume three that I really liked, to something like this over the course of so, uh, not long, it's, uh, it's like a couple chapters, is astounding. And as you keep reading and at the end of volume three you start the Golden Age stuff, the art just keeps escalating and escalating to a point where it's a treat to watch all the large-scale battles and the small stuff in a dialogue. Just really impressive stuff that I cannot even begin to comprehend and do a proper video on. But yeah, as the series progresses, don't worry. Uh, as time progresses, I should say, I will be making another video talking about the Golden Age and talking about the Conviction stuff and etc, etc. Uh, just be patient. Uh, I will get to it and you might see some uh, surprise cameos on these videos. So yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, sorry, I got sidetracked. Tell me down below, do you like this sort of video? Uh, it's more of a, an open conversation with you guys. Tell me down below three things. Do you like the title, uh, My Journey With? Uh, number two, what do you think about Berserk, spoiler free? And number three, what do you think about the uh, this specific art, the first three books? And does it do a successful job of uh, introducing us to this world and these characters? On our next video, I'm going to highlight some answers and, uh, you know, sort of continue the discussion a little bit before moving on. So, yeah, thank you guys so very much. I hope this was entertaining. I didn't feature a lot of stuff, but uh, I hope you like it anyways. If you're a Berserk fan, I, I, I kind of wanted to do something special with the series and just uh, admire its greatness. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for liking, commenting, subscribing, and do, doing all the wonderful stuff that you guys do. You are the absolute best. I couldn't do this without you. Of course, uh, last video, I made a very noobish mistake of putting my cell phone next to my recording equipment that I'm using here, and the signal interference showed up when I was editing it, and... Uh, I had to cut a lot of juicy stuff that I was talking about for uh, Dr. Stone, so I'm sorry about that. And I didn't mention on that video, but I don't think it made it to the final 
version, uh, we have unlocked the community tab uh, here on YouTube. If you go to my channel, you should see the community tab where finally I have been waiting for so long to get that thing open so I can tell you guys, hey, I'm on a break. Hey, I'm editing this. I'm doing that. I'm talking uh, like I, I recently took a little uh, hiatus, but I'm back. Stuff like that uh, uh, to keep you guys informed if you don't follow me on social media. But speaking of social media, follow me there if you can. Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Just type uh, We Can Kick Them and I am there. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. I will catch all of you on our next video.